In this problem, we have to do a vertical order traversal of a binary tree. And uh, this has been asked quite a few times in the interviews of Facebook and Amazon, and also a few times on Google, Microsoft, and Apple. So let's first understand the problem. So here we have to traverse it vertically. So we have already seen some of the traversals like level order, in order, pre-order, post-order. So here we will traverse vertically. So first start from leftmost column. So we have a notion of column and we will call this as level or row. So we will start from leftmost. There is no element to the left of four and we will shortly see what is the notion of column. So we traverse four first and this ordering is important. Even this order of vectors and within that vector, the order of elements that is important. Then we traverse two. So you can see two here. Then we have one, five and six and why these are together. So this means they are in the same column and we will see why this is so then three and then seven. So roughly you can see that we are traversing from left to right and within a column, we are keeping the top element first. So we are starting from top to bottom. We are looking from top to down. So whichever is at the top, we will print first or include in the result first, then the element below it and then below it. So we traverse from left to right and top to bottom. So now let's define the notion of columns. So root is at column zero. So this is the middle. So if you write, if you are drawn these Cartesian axis, this is the zeroth column or Y. And then this side we have positive, this side we have negative value of X. So exactly same, we have to think of root as the pivot here. So root has a column number of zero. And when we go left, its column is one less. So this column number is minus one. This column is minus two. And when we go right, we increment the column. So this column was zero. For three, it will be plus one. For seven, it will be plus two. And from three, we are going left. So decrement one, so it becomes zero. And here from two, we are going right. So increment one, so it becomes zero. So you see that there are three elements with uh, the same column that is zero which are 1, 5 and 6 and we have kept here 1, 5 and 6 and it's not because 5 comes first in this row, it's because 5 is smaller. So first we will arrange them based on a column clearly. So this minus 2 is the smallest column. So this 4, then minus 1, we have just 2. So there is no confusion. Then we have 0. In 0, we have three elements and we arrange them. Uh, based on the row number. So when we have multiple elements, see which is at the smallest row number. So one is at row number of uh, zero. This, these elements are at row number one. These are at row number two. So these are same as levels and row is increasing from top to down. So here one is the clear winner. winner. It's at row number zero. So we put it first. Then five, six, both are at row number two. So which should be put first. So when multiple elements have same row and column, we compare their values. So five is smaller, so we keep five first. So if we had six here and five here in the original tree, then still the result will be the same only. It's not because five was coming first. So this is the basis of comparison. Now, uh, I hope the problem statement is clear. So then, then the column number is one. So at one, we have just three. Then column number is two. So at two, we have just seven and this is the result. So how we will uh, build this result? So we will traverse the, the tree and there are multiple ways of traversing. You can use uh, BFS approach or DFS approach. Here we will use DFS approach since that's more natural and recursive way of traversing. So we will start traversal from root. So root is one, its row number is zero, its column number is zero. And we will maintain a global cache. And this cache, we will keep track of what elements are in a given column. So ultimately we should have uh, minus two. So here key will be, key will be column number and value will be a vector of or a list of all the elements corresponding to that column. So a vector of vectors. And each element we will store row and value. Row and value. So this is the structure of this cache. Initially it's empty. So we start from root. Uh, we get a column number of this is row, this is column and this is node. 
So row number zero, column number zero. We check the cache whether this key is present or not. It's not present, so we insert it in new key, and this element one at row number one and the value is one. Then it will call DFS on its left. Its left is two, so this is not the value two. This is node two. It has value within it, so two and its row number is one. One more than parent and column is one less since it's the left child. And it will also call DFS three, row number one, and column number plus one. Then this two will call for four and five. So here in DFS, what we will do? In DFS, we will compare this column whether this is present in cache or not. If it's present, we will just append this value, current nodes value, into it along with row number. If it's not present, we insert a new key and one element here. So for this call, minus one is not present, so we insert minus one, and its row number is one, and value is two. Then this will call DFS on four, row number two, column number minus two. And DFS five row number two column number zero. So in this call, we will check whether minus two is present or not. It's not present, so we will insert it. Row number two value four, and then zero. Zero is already present, so we just append it to it. Or uh, row number two value five, and then we come here. Plus one is not present. One three. Then this will call for six and seven. So DFS six row number two value and column number zero. Again zero is present, so just append it two six. And also DFS seven two. Our uh, row number is two, column number is two. So two is not present. So now when this now this DFS call terminates. And one more thing we will do. We will also keep track of what is the smallest column that we encountered in this entire traversal, and also largest column. So min call equal to minus two. This is the smallest column number, and max call equal to plus two. And when this traversal completes, we will have this cache. So let me write this again. So I have uh, rewritten this cache. Now what we will do once this cache is built? So let's write our main function. Let's call it vertical order traversal. And we are passing root. So here, what we did, we did DFS on uh, root, row number zero, column number zero, and this was built a cache. So cache is now built, which is this one. Cache is built in this DFS call in this fashion. What we saw here, and then we have min c and max c. So this we have after this DFS terminates. Then what we need to do? Our result should include in this format. So first the smallest column number, then next one, and so on in in increasing order. So we know the min and max call. So what we will do for c equal to min c to max c, we get the elements corresponding to this column from this cache. So initially c will be minus two. So for minus two we have this value. So when we sort it, there is just one element, so nothing to sort. So it will be two four, and in this two four, first one is the row number, second one is the actual value, and we are just interested in value in the result. So we fetch this four second element, and result which was empty, we insert this four, and this is the only element, so just one element. Next. C becomes minus one, so we go here and get minus one. Again, one element, nothing to sort. So get the second value, put it in a vector, and insert in the result. Then C becomes zero. For zero, we come here. We have now three elements. So now we need to sort. So first, we will see the row number. So smallest row number comes first. So clearly, one is the winner here. It has a row number of zero. So it comes first. But for five and six, row number is equal two. So which one we should write? Whichever value is smaller. So uh, five is smaller. So we write five first. And as seen earlier, this 
if even if 6 was here and 5 here still we would have written 5 6 so here the basis of comparison is the value itself when they are in the same row and then 6 so we will just extract the second element of this pair first is row which is just used for comparison sorting and nothing else we are just interested in value then column number 1 so we come here it's 1 3 just one element nothing to sort then c becomes 2 max c is 2 and we come here 2 7 nothing to sort and we return this this is our final result so hope this is clear so let's write the code for this in c++ and python i will skip java for this exercise so this is our main function we will need to define a dfs also so first result is a vector of vector of int so if uh, root is null then return the empty result else we will keep one cache key is the column so it's int and then the value is a vector of pair of row and actual value so row is int and value is also int you can see the value is int let's call it cache and then min c equal to 0 max c equal to 0 and then we will call dfs on this root row number 0 column number 0 let's define the dfs first and then we need to use this cache inside this so let's pass this by reference and we will also be updating min c and max c so row number 0 column number 0 and uh, cache then min c max c and when this dfs terminate we should have this cache min c and max c ready so what we should uh, write in dfs if node is null ptr then we return and uh, then we check this is the column that is passed to us so either it has been already inserted in the cache some elements corresponding to that column or this is not present so if it's present then we will simply append it to it so this cache will return the vector of elements so we will append it to it the current uh, row number so first element is row number and second is the value else this was not present here so insert it both are same thing just handling if the key is not present we cannot directly access using this so that's why this check is required so we insert uh, the column number and then row and value and then we update the min c and we will recursively call this on left and right of this node so if this was leaf node it will be null so it will automatically return from there So row number will be one, one more than the current node for its children since it's left column number will be one less for right column is one more so when this dfs terminates we have these things ready the cache min c and max c so what we will do c equal to min c c less than max c plus 1 plus plus c
we can also uh, sort this in place we don't need to make a copy here but for simplicity i'm making a copy we don't need even we can pass this so let's use this only and then uh, this is a vector of pairs so we need a way of comparing it and the comparison is based on row number which is the first element and if rows are equal then based on second number so our comparator will take two pairs so this means that if the first a uh, value of this first pair is less than put p1 first but this is not the only criteria if this is not true then we have to also check if p1 dot first is equal to p2 dot first that is row num rows numbers are equal then if p1 dot second is less than p2 dot second which is the actual node value then we put p1 first if none of these cases are satisfied put p2 first in the sorting so this cache c is now sorted so what we will do uh, we will have a vector that we want to insert in the result this should be vector of int since in the result we expect vector of ints that is the actual node values and not the row number so we will extract the second element from this vector and put it into this vector so we are getting the second that is the value and pushing it to this vector and finally we insert it into result and after iterating through all the columns we return the result line number 20 16 and this works uh, but the answer is wrong uh, the comparator is wrong p1 dot first it should be p2 dot first and then first then second so we were comparing apples with oranges here p1 dot first and p2 dot second now it's correct and the solution is accepted and the solution is uh, around better than 93.71% and it's very close to the best one so what is the time complexity here uh so here we are clearly uh, iterating through all the elements we are traversing this complete tree so clearly on is there at least but after that traversal we get this cache which we need to sort individually so the sum of all the elements in all the elements in this cache is same as the elements here and at max let's say in some case we have uh, elements compare com in order of n in this so sorting will take n log n time and it's just we are split splitting the complete n into different ends like n1 n2 n3 and sorting them individually so it overall it can take n log n time but uh, in most cases uh, it should be let's say we divide into 
10 parts then n by 10 log n by 10 so it it will be n log n only you can do more uh, time complexity analysis but it looks like n log n here now let's uh, write the same thing in python so we will have result which is a vector or a list and if root equal to none then return result else we will have a cache which is a dictionary and then we will define our DFS function and here we don't need to pass these uh, this cache and uh, min and max since we have added this to the self So if this column has already, if we have already inserted sub elements corresponding to this column, we will simply get that vector and append to it this value also, the row and the current value. Else we are inserting it for the first time. So cache c equal to you can also initialize this with empty list corresponding to c and then just append it. So both are same. And this should be here. And then we call DFS on its left and its row number will be one more and column number will be one less for left for right again row is one more column is also one more so this dfs terminates and when this completes for this tree then we will have this min c max c and cas ready for us so we just need to do the sorting so for c in range So this c will take a value of uh, minus 2 first for our example then minus 1 0 1 2 so we pick the vector corresponding to this column and sort it and the basis of sorting will be the first value which is row number and then second value which is the value itself if the row numbers are same then we will extract value from all the elements of this vector and push it into this vector which will be pushed to the result Uh, so we have not called DFS itself here we should call DFS on root row 0 column 0 so this was missing 
let's run it again and the python solution is also accepted and here also we are good but not that great we are at the peak of the distribution so i hope uh, the solution is clear uh, the main uh, crux of the problem is in building this cache when we are traversing so when we go left the column number decreases by one when we go right column number increases by one and we are keeping track of what all elements are in a, a given column number for all the columns and then we finally sort this based on row number followed by value of the elements.